computer and not the cloud because last month I recorded the cloud and somehow they didn't get in the cloud for some reason. Okay, <clears throat> so hey, reminder, love our cities. Here's, here's what we are, here's what we do here. Three things, citywide volunteer days, you know, is the catalytic event for the for everything that can happen in your city, you know, anything good. Um, the big event that draws most amount of people to launch things, bring awareness, to bring maximum involvement. Number two is the ongoing uh, facilitating citywide initiatives. You know, it's not just about the day. The day's not the goal. The day's not the end, but it's it's the ongoing throughout the year. Year-round involvement is where we really see um, change taking place in our cities here. And then thirdly is when that happens, when those two happen, you get to know the businesses, the, the, the congregational leaders, you get to know the people in, in education, people in government, you become a convener in the city where you know more people and have great relationship with the people that you can bring, um, you can you know convene like maybe no one else in this city here. And then underpinning all that is the networking and collaborating with other city leaders like we're doing here. <laughs> this is... Uh, None of us can do this alone, in a sense. It's uh, pretty overwhelming to run solo, but you've got a, a bunch of other wonderful people here that you're looking at that, at our, that are doing the same thing in a different city, a different context maybe, but we have a lot, a lot, a lot in common here. So let me, uh, let me uh, talk about this, um, the networking, how we wanna go a little bit deeper here. And we kind of brought this up last month about this once a month meeting for 45 minutes is, is great, um, but I really wanna see you know, opportunities for you all to connect with each other, even outside of this meeting, if you so wish, if you so need to. Um, but a couple of the ideas we had were, one is proximity. And so working with Ian Stevenson and Jay Williams um, down south, so Orange County in LA, um, they're going to be doing all they can to get the different city leaders together in the LA, Orange County area, because um, there's a lot of similarities down there geographically. Um, and so I'm really excited working with them and, uh, and really and trying to even going after cities that aren't involved yet and just working together with them. We want every city down there to be a part here. And a lot of cities are. It's amazing how many cities are. Stanislaus County, Brian over here. Wave, Brian. Uh, Brian, wait, there you go. Stanislaus County. So he is going to be working hard at getting together all the cities. He's already doing this. All the cities in Stanislaus County to regularly meet. There's a lot of similar issues and challenges that we have in this area and um and we want to get those cities conversing and helping each other and supporting each other in that if you're in an area some of you are you know kind of off on your own in this part of the country whatever um but if you have other cities near you anything i can do to help you to to um to get together with other cities by you maybe cities that aren't on board with lover cities yet but maybe would be interested in doing a volunteer day and doing you know, um, kind of like what you're doing. Um, you know, I'd love to work together with you on that here. A couple of topical um, groups that we've been talking about. Uh, Mandy and I, Mandy's the Love Waterford leader. She's been bringing up to me, but man, I would love to have this opportunity where we have a topic during this 45 minute time, but we don't really get to dive deeper into it, you know? And there's some of us that want to go even farther. Today, we're going to be talking about having the best rally experience, but we're not going to be spending, you know, tons of time on it. Um, some of you that we're, what we're spending is enough. That's good. But if you want to go deeper and dive deeper in, in really exploring how to have that best rally experience or how to best small groups, how to connect with businesses or churches or whatever, um, we want to have kind of a dive deeper time here. Um, so a group, and you'll be hearing about this in coming months, hopefully that we'll get this together. The other thing um, is for new cities. If you're a new city, or a new city leader, this is all brand new to you. And it might be seeing a little bit overwhelming. You might have a few questions here and how this thing should work, especially this coming year here. And so after this meeting, I'm meeting with all the different new cities and new city leaders, any, answering any questions and just really wanna make this as easy as possible for you. I wanna hold your hand. This isn't overwhelming. Um, it might seem that way at times, but it's, but it's not rocket science how to pull this thing off here. And so we're gonna have a meeting after uh, this meeting, and then the, the final group I've been exploring here is becoming a nonprofit organization. There's a number of cities that you've been doing this for a while now that it's time to start walking on your own. It's time to start building this, um, your own organization. And that might seem overwhelming, but, but there's some of us here that have already done it. And, um, and we'd love to really help you through that to become even more impactful in your community. 
Um, so that'll be coming down the line here as well. John is our new website specialist here, and he's got some updates that he wants to share with you all. So John, take it away. If you want, I can put up that PDF you sent me, uh, if that would sure. help. Sure, yeah, that'd be great. That? Okay. That'd be great. All righty, of course it just left me. Okay, y'all see this. Perfect. Okay, go for it. Awesome, yeah, we, uh, as Jeff mentioned, we're just working through with our developer to get, um, yeah, just the best experience and some of the things that have been pushed through. Um, so from, uh, since our last meeting, we've had um, kind of these four things at the top here that have been done. Um, one of the uh, big things is any inactive users uh, now uh, no longer have login access. Um, so if a user is made inactive, they're unable to get in those things. Um, the uh, last time we talked about um, getting some of the, when we're adding child um, information on the back end and stuff, being able to easily edit, remove those that functionally hasn't always been there. Um, so that is now on the front end registration form um, for when the users are adding children. Um, then when you're actually managing your volunteers, um, been really trying to rethink and help get that process a little better for you guys to navigate and pull lists as needed. Um, so there's a, now an all user button there when you're searching for volunteers, um, as well as the ability to filter by role specifically. Um, yeah, and then and I think Jeff's going to send this out for you guys all um, afterwards, but there's also lots of other updates we're still working on, um, hoping to get those done here in the next few weeks. Um, we'll kind of keep you guys posted as that happens. Yeah, our developer he got he got COVID really bad, and so I know yeah. he's behind on these pending updates, which I'm not thrilled about. But he, you know, we got we're doing the best we can do. So I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks these pending things get done, and we're going to put the pressure on him much as we can to get these things done here. Yeah, good. And then hey, talk about the languages. The language, uh, Corey, you brought up. Oh yeah, idea last month. And we've been on it. And so, John, share with about the language options we can have for our websites. Yeah, good. We've been, um, yeah, the the need obvious of uh, engaging some of your communities, you know, with uh, Spanish or other uh, languages that happen. Uh, and so, there um, there are a couple options we were looking into. Um, but what's what's happening if if you haven't noticed in a lot of browsers, uh, or actually in pretty much all the major browsers now, is they have um, built-in translation features um, that you just have to add your own. And, and probably if you don't speak English, you probably already know this, um, but you, you're able to actually add in your preferred language um, and your browser itself will translate um, content for you. And so I think what, what we're, we can do um, to help make that accessible and available for people on your guys' websites um, is we're going to create some sort of process um, or uh, information that uh, will be included on your website saying, you know, need to view this in Spanish, um, you know, and it'll have kind of more of an instruction of how to make that happen. Um, one such you guys know how to help people get there, um, but as well as uh, the ability to easily um, translate um, your guys' websites and content. Um, that way um, works pretty slick. Um, if you uh, go into your Safari or Chrome or whatever, add a do, add a secondary language, you can see how it all works um, in that kind of way. Yeah. So the thought was that bottom black bar at the bottom of the page, you know, have translation or and then you know if it's if you're using Safari, if you're using Explorer or whatever the browser you use, here's the instructions on how to make it happen here. Um, but we've been testing it out. It's pretty cool. And this wasn't the case. I mean, this wasn't, I mean, so Corey, we were talking, you know, oh man, our developer, how's he going to do this and all this and like, oh my gosh, this is right here. This is ready for us now. So thank you guys for putting some time into that. I know that that will really help um, Colorado Springs. So thank you. Try it for out, sure. try it out on your website. You know, this, you'll see the Spanish or whatever is pretty slick. And it's all languages too, which is really, really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. It could. It, it looks like a couple um, comments came through through the chat here. Um, inactive users is when you actually you can make a user inactive, um, and so that that's what constitutes that. Um, let's see. A specific language on your website. Feel free to reach out to us, um, and we can help change some of that. Um, help get that um, language change from like Rally to Kickoff or whatever um, that's mm -hmm. there. And yes, yeah, so the last one here from Lynn. Um, for uh, kind of responsive photos and those things, that is that is um, 
one of the big updates we're working on for sure, um, helping make sure all the photos and all that kind of thing resize properly um, and effectively within a huge um, kind of uh, design shift um, in how all that will display. So uh, that's definitely to come. Good. Very cool. All right, I've got one thing I want to plug here. Uh, let me, where to go? Where to go? There it goes right here. All right, I'm going to share this here real quick. So this is, this is something I want to plug John because off to the side, we contracted him with him and separately from what we're, you know, the love our cities in a sense. Um, but we said, Hey, we want to do an end of the year letter and we need help um, and design. And, and so he put together this, he designed this letter for us and he designed the envelope and a response card and mailed everything off for us. Um, it was amazing. It's so slick and professional. So it got me thinking like if you and your city needs help with any kind of marketing materials or, and John, I'm going to have you speak more what you can do to help, but you know, I just know he was a huge blessing to us in this and contracting with him for this special project. And he said he would be available to even help other cities as well. Um, and any kind of, you know, media kind of project that you might have. John, I'm gonna let you speak more to that. So I'm not speaking out of turn. I'm not offering <laughs> your services that I don't you know all that yeah. you can do. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. No, yeah. Um, I mean, as as being someone who's been on a, a city team, I understand a lot of the pieces that go into it. Um, worked, you know, um, loved working with Tony and I think I saw Daniel on the call uh, with Love Snowcomy Valley. Um, but yeah, I just wanted, um, you know, I have, I have a business that supports my my ministry habit. And so I would love to just partner with any of you guys. Um, happy to do yeah any sorts of design, helping order materials, banners, signs, those things for your actual rally. Um, we can do um, pretty much anything, anything you dream, we can help make happen. Um, you know, we've got uh, um, ongoing design packages. Um, if you have, if you're always needing social media content and those kinds of things that are pretty affordable, we're happy to work with you um, of whatever that looks like to uh, make sure you have the best, um, you know, kind of media presence um, possible. Um, I've got connections with people who do video and those things. I don't do video, um, but as far as anything graphic design wise um, or web stuff, we're happy to happy to help make happen. Very cool. All right, so I got a question for you all. Um, how many of you would say it's a struggle at times? working with churches, working with, um, you know, trying to engage, involve, or lack of communication. Sometimes it's, it's just a struggle at times. Anybody? A few hands here. Um, it is at times. And although we love churches because, man, that's the most amazing volunteer force there is. And when a church is on, it's an amazing thing, how they can communicate and mobilize. It's pretty amazing. Um, <clears throat> how many of you maybe recently in the last couple of years, and I'm not going to dive into this too deep here, but maybe you have struggled with churches as it relates to the political divide that is happening right now. Some churches maybe are digging in my freedoms, my rights, and, and what you guys are doing is to social justice, whatever that means to them, whatever that even means anymore. Um, anyone have a struggle with some of your churches in your city that are kind of withdrawing and kind of getting angry at life. <laughs> Anybody? Um, so I have, <laughs> and um, I talked to one of our, another city this last month who was just really overwhelmed with this issue. Um, and just seeing the great, a great shift that has happened in the last couple of years, that a couple of years ago, I, I would often say, God has given us so much favor in our city. Like every church, every congregation, no matter how progressive, no matter how conservative, I don't know. God just given us favor to work with them. They're all getting involved. I can't say that anymore. Uh, most of them I can. And maybe that's how life works. If you got some cranky people on one side and cranky people on the other side, but the main majority, if you don't have anyone, if you don't have any critics, you might not be making much of a difference, you know? Um, so we're all going to have some critics in life. Um, but I know it's something that I see in brewing around the country that is affecting a lot of our cities. Um, and there are just some churches that just don't want to engage socially um, anymore, um, as maybe they, they did in the past. Um, so if, if you need help and support in that, just reach out to me. And maybe that could be one of our groups we get together here is just kind of listen to each other, learn from each other, how we can keep bridges built 
how do we um, offer lots of grace and understanding and listening, um, but still not compromise who we are, who's God called us to be. Um, so yeah, if, if you want some support or some interaction or let, let's set up a time. So just reach out to me and then I'll, I'll put that together here. Um, okay, so Citywide Volunteer Days. Can you in the chat, can each of you put what your date is this year? If you have a date that you're planning on for this year, if you could just put that in the chat as well as everybody's frozen. Anybody hear me right now? Ah, what's going on? All right, everybody, yeah, everybody hear me? I'm, I'm, my, my internet might be bad this morning. It seems like it keeps freezing up here. What I'm asking is in the chat, can you put the date or dates of your citywide volunteer days this year, your, your events? And, and some of you have already done that. You maybe gave it to me. If you can just do it again. So I make sure I have everyone's dates they're planning on this year. And if you're, if you're not planning on a rally, if you're not planning, I think most cities are, but if you're not, just let me know that as well. Um, if you're planning on kind of doing a big rally before, before the big day here. Um, sound good? So if you can just put that in the chat right now. Does everybody hear me? I'm seeing people moving. Okay, good. I don't know what's up my internet here. Um, okay, so okay, here's the topic for the day. Is planning for the most amazing rally experience. I am a huge, huge believer in not just doing projects where people go to and then they go home. Um, I'm a huge believer in what if we were to gather as many people together before doing the projects where you could see people all over your city, all different backgrounds and beliefs and, and different churches and different you know, leader, political leaders or whatever, having the whole city in a sense come together you know, for a day of loving their city. It is powerful. And most of you know all this stuff. But it is just so impactful. And I, you know, it, this April, I will stand on the stage here and it'll be three years since I've stood on that stage and to do a rally here. I mean, it's been three years. And so there is some groaning <laughs> and some pain that we haven't been able to do this. And so we have, I feel like we have lost a lot of some momentum here, to be honest with you. But to do this rally again is I'm super, super excited. Is everybody, everybody hear me still? And everybody's frozen up here. Now you're muted, Jeff. The joys of technology, man. And Brian, I'm in the office now. We got this, we're paid for this high speed internet here. What is up here? It is. I got my home internet. It's working cool. Yeah, I know my home doesn't work either. It's me. Wherever I go, I get bad internet. So Howard, it's not just Tuolumne County. It's me. <laughs> All right. So I don't know what you heard. All I'm saying is the rally. I believe in it like crazy. It's an incredible, incredible thing. So I am full on in. And when we don't do it, we, we we're missing something here. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to show you some photos of the rally that our most recent one three years ago um, that we have done. And I'll make some comments along the way here and hopefully spark some ideas or um, some thoughts or some questions with you. Um, so let me see if I can share this without things going haywire. Um, okay, here we go. Share screen. All right, do you all see? Uh oh, Jeff, don't tell me it's not working again. Do y'all see? That's no, see, it's not working. There we go. All right, what is going on? I can't show my pictures now. I do all this stuff ahead of time. It doesn't matter if I plan ahead of time. Okay, let's try it again here. Okay, there's my photo. Share screen. Okay. Do you see the photos now? Okay, golly, I'm sorry, y'all. Okay, so this is a photo of standing on the stage looking out at one of the streets. So we have two street blocks. Um, and um, this is down the left side. You'll see the right side here in a little bit. Uh, but it's really cool. We get the fire department. They, um, they bring out their big hook and ladder and hang their flag up. You know, public servants love this kind of stuff, hugely supportive. 
we got our vendors off to the side here, off to the left side, Starbucks and Pepsi and, and yogurt. And I mean, all these different kinds of our vendors, we tell our vendors, first of all, you have to be able to give us something of value to our volunteers that show up. So don't just hand out pieces of paper. We don't want that, but something of value. So like Save Mart, the grocery store gives out oranges and apples. I mean, things like that, that, um, and you need to give out thousands. You're going to be prepared to get thousands of them and you're going to get great publicity, but this is what we need from you. Um, it's cool. These, these, I remember this year, these uh, people made up these free hugs t-shirt or free hug signs, these grandmas, there's a bunch of grandmas that had a, a free hugs project. And then you see over here, you see all these projects, the name of these project banners um, that we have off to the side here. All right, let me keep going here. So this is the list is the other side of the street here. So you see those project banners off to the left side and the vendors off to the right. Um, yeah, just kind of gives you a little overview of what we have here. The merchandise tent is right in the middle. You don't see it, but that's a big focus of selling t-shirts and hats and things like that. Here's the sign up front. You know, they, we got these vinyl signs we hang between the light poles um, downtown um, and um, on these signs we put our sponsors on these signs so if there's if you if a, someone sponsored the project we put their logo below the sign um, here but this is a really cool project of convalescent retirement homes where we got a flower company that donates thousands of carnations and they're given out to people to go of course we can't do that this year um, but hopefully in the future we'll be able to do it again um, Okay, so this is a view kind of looking at the stage, kind of in the middle of the crowd, where a lot of t-shirts are, are given away. You see those project signs off to the left, and then the vendors off to the right. Um, <clears throat> having a mascot, I think this mascot costs us 200 bucks, and it has been worth every dime to have. A, everyone loves being by the mascot, getting Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, all the different groups involved has been really, really cool. Having a photo booth has been a win too. Um, some of our cities, you guys have a photo booth and people just love, you know, take their own pictures, stand in front of it. And, um, and it's, just, it's just a big win to have a photo booth area. We got this idea from Love Slow. They had this banner they put up. They put, I love and put your city because, and then people write down there, write all the reasons why. And then like the city hall, our city hall puts it up, you know, for a couple months, they have it up as people come in. And other cities have done this as well here. Um, we got a cornhole, you know, um, down there just for people to hang around and have fun. A lot of football teams put their jerseys on. There are also a lot of our volunteers, local high school football teams come out. Um, here's a picture of the stage. Um, you see how we do our, you know, the big name up top and then our sponsors right down below. Uh, Modesto Subaru has a love Modesto car. They wrap. Um, it's really cool that, and this, and what's really amazing is for every signature, they donate a dollar. So last year we did, we didn't do it last year or the year before, um, but the previous year, um, I think, I don't know, it was a couple, three, four thousand dollars something like that. I mean, it's, it was somewhat significant they donated, but they get great publicity and we get to drive around and go to all different churches or meetings or whatever. It's a really, really cool thing here. Um, here's a picture of oh, mascots, dude, get every mascot you can in town and have them show up to the event. Again, kids and families, they love mascots and we have them dancing in front of the stage area. Um, don't, don't go cheap on your sound system either. I mean, depending on your size of crowd, again, this is all relative to the size of crowd you have. Uh, but having a good sound system is really, really, really important. A megaphone doesn't always work well. And then like after we have all these little kid friendly projects on site. So I remember my wife told me years ago, she's, you know, all of our friends aren't coming to this thing. I'm like, why? She goes, you expect them to get in the car with all their little kids and come downtown, fight the traffic and, and then get back into the car after the rally and go to the project and then forget it. People, it's too much work. You need to have you know, like kid friendly projects right on site there. And so, so we got all these projects where hundreds of people just stay behind there. All right. That's a quick overview of, again, we're a different size than your town, I get it. But I think there's some transferable principles that are sort of transferable ideas that, these aren't all ideas that we've done. We have stolen ideas from all of you too, but just having a great experience. We start at 8 a.m. We say rally starts at 8 a.m. Uh, or no, festivities start at a.m. Rally starts at 8.45. So it's not a long time period. People do show up earlier and earlier every year, um, but it's, it's not a long time period because the point of the day is that 10 minute rally, which 
maybe we'll get to that in a future time here. But I have a 10 minute time where we just pump up the crowd, we launch t-shirts out in the crowd, we give some directives. Um, we have our, our mayor this year is gonna you know, share a proclamation, you know, that this is Love Modesto Day in our town. Um, yeah, there's some, some of those fun ideas going on. So I think the main thing is, is this, preparation, early setup. We start at 4 a.m. downtown, getting everything set up, you know, and then it's go time. I mean, the, when we have all these people with walkie talkies and we have security, you know, and all that going on, and then takedown is a lot of people like to set up. They don't like to take down either. <laughs> um, and then evaluate well and, and thank people well is, is kind of the, the process of this here. So I want to open it up here. What any questions you have? And then I want some of your cities, some of your cities to share some uniqueness about your rally experience too that, that we can learn from. But let me open up for sure some questions about what I just shared about the rally experience that, that we try to create here. Go ahead, Corey. Jeff, I was just wondering, um, so you have the rally and then you send out to projects and I would love to hear you talk about that process, the turn from the rally to the projects. Okay. Um, is there a delay getting to the projects? Is there any confusion for volunteers that are at the rally? What's traffic like? Like, I would love to hear what's that turnaround look like? A really good question. I found that in earlier years, there was more confusion when we, when some people showed up at their pro, we don't in the, on the sign up page, project sign up, we don't share where the project location is going to be. We only share where the low, where the rally location is going to be. Now you have that option and we needed that option these last couple of years, <clears throat> but we didn't, until, in a normal year, we don't share where the project is because then it's super confusing. And we want every, many people as possible to come downtown. Not, not everybody does. And I get it. It's hard. It's, you know, for some people and their older disabilities or whatever it is, they just want to go to their, and if they're in their neighborhood, they don't want to drive all the way downtown and then come back to their neighborhood again. Fair. Um, but as, as much as we can, we try to get people downtown. Um, what we say is this, when you show up downtown, go find your project sign. They're all in alphabetical order. So like 100 plus projects are right around that block there. And meet your project leader. Um, we're going to have a short rally at 845. Then right after the rally, go back to your sign. Because you're going you're gonna to be going getting food and pancakes and all that kind of stuff. But go back to your sign. Because we dismiss. They say, hey. You know, I do a quick prayer at the end, you know, or a quick send off and say, now go to your project signs, meet your project leaders. And then they'll give last minute instructions. Those project leaders, they have, some of them have hard copy waiver forms, depending on the organization they need them to fill out, um, or they have directions or clear directions where the project is. The goal is to get out of there as soon as possible. The beautiful thing about a Saturday morning is our streets are empty and our parking garages are empty. You know, so people can get in there and get out of, they don't have to walk tons of miles like they would during the week, you know, with all the businesses open. So, but yeah, it's pretty slick, Corey. It really is. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't take long. It's crazy how like, whoa, people are gone. <laughs> you know, Howard. Hey, Jeff. Um, so we're love to Olme County. We have um, like Modesto, um, like Stanislaus County, it's spread. Mm -hmm. There are people that work uh, on projects and live out of, you know, away from town. Yeah. And so we're getting a lot of pushback that say, hey, we don't want to come down to town for an hour and then come back up. Or maybe yeah. the project manager themselves are trying to set everything up. And so what we're doing is we're considering this time having the rally on a Friday night and then having the, um, the projects on Saturday morning. Yeah. And that way people can come down, take their time, get their shirts, sign up, whatever forms we need to sign up, and then go directly to the projects on Saturday morning. And that seems like it's going to work better this year. We'll see. You know where, because you're so spread out, you're the whole county. It's kind of like Eric, Central Coast. You're so spread out that maybe a Friday night thing would work better. You know, um, it is, it's a big ask for people to come out twice. I think the ideal is they come out once you know, and it's a three, remember our project usually end about, you know, noon or 1230. So it's like a, it's a four hour or so commitment, but it, but you know, if you're so spread out like that, I do say, I, one thing we have learned recently is for project leaders, you need to have two people kind of leading the project. One that is at the project site, getting things ready, you know, and making sure they're ready when people come. So not, so the, the assistant project leader might be at the project site, the project leader needs to be downtown. That's where all the people come. That's where the other volunteers are going to be coming to. 
Um, but sometimes you need to have someone at the site ahead of time to preparing. Does that make sense? Um, rather than just showing up and then trying to get things organized, that doesn't work. You've got to be organized, prepared project leader before people come. But yeah, for your situation and maybe some you know other situations that might that might work best. Um, Howard, what we do, ours is similar. We're not countywide, but we do have like five different cities within our valley. And um, during COVID time, we've been having multiple um, like mini rallies. And so it's the project site and the rally. And then the, the project lead um, will run the rally for that team. So there's roughly, I mean, it's pretty small. There's like 50 people per um, site, but it's like all these little mini rallies happening throughout the valley. We did one big drive-through rally last year and that seemed to work out well. Um, but again, we don't have 50,000 people coming. You know, we have, you know, I think we had 350 people, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it, was, it worked out well. Jeff, can you share, somebody asked what, um, what exactly do you talk about at the rally? Yeah, um, it is, by the way, a lot of this information is in the, the city leaders resources. And so I think I have, I have the city leader resources, I have verbatim like scripted out exactly what I, what I do. Um, and so it's been three years. So if I can remember here, um, the beginning is, I mean, just pumping up the crowd, um, just sharing some data of what's happening today. Um, all the people, all the different projects. Um, we always seem like our little tradition here. I don't know if it's a good one or not. I'm sure Brian's going to tell me if it's not. Um, but uh, but we, the don't stop believing remix is like you know pumping up the crowd. You know, and we shoot all these. We have a t-shirt launcher and people. We have different people throwing t-shirts off from the stage. It's just, I don't know, man. It just everyone loves catching free stuff off a of stage and it just pumps the crowd up like crazy. So having that a part of it and then giving, I know some directives um, about how the day is going to work. Um, you know, our local baseball team gives free baseball tickets to everybody. And so we kind of just some of that organization, there's a point in there. I remember I always share, um, you know, this isn't about the day it's about, and here's some of the ongoing things going on that, that really is the point of all this. Um, I always share for me, it's been a personal thing that I've shared. Hey, I get asked all the time, why do I love Modesto? Where does things start? And all that. I said, for me, I believe there's no better way to live life than to love God and love people. You know, that's, you know, but for whatever reason why you're here today, I'm so glad you're here. You know, I don't, we're not bait and switching people to come downtown. They're going to hear preaching and worship music and stuff. That's not cool because we want the whole community to come together. Um, but it seems like, um, I just feel strongly that for me, that, that, that works because I do get asked all the time how this thing happens. Where did this thing come from? Um, then yeah, there's giveaways like, um, like on the stage, I don't know if you saw, but there's a, um, like the local radio stations, by the way, if you're local radio stations, they have concert tickets. They got theme park tickets that they give away free all the time. They will give you those. So do those as giveaways and Disneyland for how many years they've done free giveaways too, but they're not doing it right now. Uh, hopefully next year, points of light is the contact. Points of light is how you work through. You register your nonprofit. You get 20 free Disneyland tickets a year. Um, but of course, they're not doing it this year. Um, but, and, you know, we give away all these tickets. And it's a big deal. You give them away. People are excited. They win the prize and whatever it is. So that's kind of a quick over bit. On that resources page, I have it scripted and what I've done in the past. And again, it's not gospel. Like, it's not perfect. You use, I want to see what you, if you have a scripted rally too, let me learn from you because yours is probably better than mine. All right. Any more, any more questions? Can I hear from a couple of your cities of what you have done in the past that you think that we, what we could learn from, or we could get some ideas from creative things that you have done? Uh, I'm all ears. Am I going to have to call people out? I don't want to have to call people out. Come on. Jay, tell us about Love Fullerton. What are some things you have done that have been creative? Jay's ignoring me. Krista, do you start talking about Love Whittier? Go ahead and share some things you have done. One of the rallies, we had a local like 
CrossFit instructor come to do the crowd pump up part and everybody did like minimal exercise, but stuff that got people kind of stretching because it's early in the morning and not everybody is like warmed up. And um, that was like a really fun way to engage the crowd that didn't rely on like the charisma of somebody on our team. If we didn't have that right player, there was somebody who already is used to getting a crowd to engage in that kind of way. I think that's a great idea. Like you could, we could ever, because when the festivities or whatever's going on, all right, everybody stop what you're doing. We're going to have your city, Whittier's largest, you know, Zumba you know, class right now or whatever it is. And everybody do their stretches. And I think it's a great idea. That's really cool. All right. Someone else, what do you do at your Friday night? Or if you do a Saturday, what have you done that has been that maybe we can learn from? are so humble come on i would just say one of the things that um we stumbled on is your public officials are dying to be recognized and they will give you all kinds of proclamations if you invite them (laughs) which works well for the paper and having nice banners things on your wall you know what's interesting like during the beginning years I, I had our mayor up front once and I gave him the mic and he went off and I said, I'll never do that ever again. Um, and I, I've gone and unfortunately I've gone and Brian has helped me here. I I've, I've took the pendulum too far. And so this year we're planning on having our mayor, our new mayor, um, read a proclamation of this day is love Modesto Day or whatever. And you're right. That's such a win. And having, um, you know, the Congress people and all that, they all they all want to be seen. And but you don't have to put them all on stage, um, but but it is a it is a total win for sure. You know we're even going to do um, co. What do you, Brian, go ahead and share what we're doing for the the co chairs. Well, one one idea. Speaking of uh, stealing ideas, I took this from a couple other uh, organizations, but we're going to have two honorary co chairs. Um, and really, it's just a ceremonial thing. But you pick kind of two community champions, two community leaders. So for us, we have the leader of our our Modesto Chamber of Commerce, and then we have a Central Valley Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So we're going to bring them in, considering what happened to business during COVID, and they'll, you know, just they're known in the community. So they become ambassadors for that day. So we'll announce them when we go live with our projects as our our um, uh, co-committee chairs. And again, it's just a ceremonial role. They get a little thing, and, and then that's it. But it's a nice way to just create more ambassadors for what you're doing. So during the festivities, that 45 minute time, and we even maybe start a little before eight, but we've got a couple of people up front, people who look like the community. They don't all look like me, right? Um, and that they know how to communicate well. And about every 10 minutes, because people are slowly coming in, they do a, hey, if you're just coming in, so glad that you're here. Don't forget to get your free decal and this and that, and, and just a couple little announcements. But also during those little break times, I, that's where I see us acknowledging, you know, our their co-chairs or may, maybe even our mayor proclamation or different things like that. We want to we want to have those little 10 minute, you know, every 10 minutes for about you know two minutes, interrupt, interrupt everybody. Maybe do that Zuma, uh, you know, Zuma class real quick or something like that. Just to have keep it going here. Um, I think that's a real win here. Also, this year we're going to have a DJ, a live DJ um, doing, you know, the music. And I'm going to and I'm, <laughs> I'm really crazy about that. I want to make sure the music is exactly lyrically everything. I am, I am crazy about making sure everything is done just right. Um, but I also, I think it'd be cool to have someone mix in and doing all that kind of fun stuff too. Hey Jeff, um, this is Jay with uh, Fullerton. A um, couple of things that we've done, basically we've copied what you did and uh, we got our inspiration from you, but we have a, we have a, a gal that runs a dance academy in town. And so she comes in there with a team and gets the audience dancing with them with uh, some good music. We uh, do giveaways as well. We have a guy from Disneyland who gets a bunch of Disneyland swag and we throw that out. Um, The other thing is is we give away all our t-shirts. So that's really what gets people there. That's where you get your t-shirts. So you come there, you sign waivers and you get your t-shirt. So that, and we also have free food for everybody. So we have breakfast burritos, we have pastries and that kind of thing. So then the rally's pretty short and quick. And then we head people off and our, our projects start at 9.30 to 
And then we actually come back to the same location for a luncheon afterwards um, that's got uh, city restaurants that are providing free food for lunch. Awesome. Thank you, Jay. All right, well, let's do this here. Um, hey, Jeff, I just remember one cool thing we've done. Um, yeah. We haven't done it for a few years. I've kind of forgotten. But we were on a cycle of choosing like a um, nonprofit of the year, like we would feature one specific and we just kind of rotated through them and then gave like a little something special you know we gave a dozen bikes or we gave you know new carpet or something that just kind of highlighted you know we were working with a bunch of the nonprofits, but kind of featured one each year that's, that's great uh, yeah any chance to get to acknowledge other people and to celebrate them it's just a win i mean the more that we can celebrate others we win they win we all win and that's a life principle of course here um I want to invite you all. If you're if you're not if you've not put in there your date yet, um, if you're not on April 30th, you're welcome to come come to Modesto. <laughs> Some of you have always wanted to do that. Yeah, right. Um, but but we have every year we've got cities people fly in from around the country and they just observe what we do. And we have a Friday night we kind of wine and dine you Friday night and then Saturday we take you around to projects and downtown and at lunch and. All that kind of stuff. Uh, if you get yourself here and get your lodging, we take care of the rest. Um, but if you're if you're interested and if you're available on April 30th, if your big day is not on that day, I want to invite you to come. Um, just let me know and I can send you more information. Um, okay, it is 8:44. If you want to stay on the call, especially if you're a new city or a new city leader, um, I would love for you to stay on the call. Just to let's just kind of have some Q and A for as long as needed. And I want to help and be a help to your sitting that way. I appreciate you all. Have a great day.